Hi, and welcome back to uh, the KAT Photoshop tutorials. This tutorial is going to go over how to make the yearbook and the calendar um, Photoshop documents. So I'm going to show you a couple that we've done over the last couple of years. Uh, for our yearbook, we have the yearbook pages for each KAT black belt who got their black belt that year um, for the first time in, through KAT. Um, also, we have all sorts of different pages for the yearbooks, uh, for competition team or fun stuff that's happened that year. So I'll go over kind of how to do a bit of all of this stuff. For the calendars, um, we just kind of have some fun images of the, the men or next year the women of KAT calendar. And as you can see, you change the background and uh, the borders for each theme. Uh, for the month. So I'll show you guys how to do that. Change the borders, um, the cutout, where to find your backgrounds, things like that. So we're going to start with the yearbook. So first of all, we're going to go to KAT Dropbox right here. And we're going to go down to yearbook 2011 or whatever year it happens to be for you. And there are all sorts of different documents in here. I'll blow this up so you can see it. Um, but what we want to start with is the template because that's going to give us the correct size for the canvas and it's also going to give us these little guides which are our borders here. For the guides you don't want to uh, go beyond those for things you don't want printed. So this is going to be our document right here and we can add to it whatever we want. Um, also within that yearbook document are some of the raw photos that we put for you for the people who still need to go into the yearbook or things like that. So we have, um, let's say this image of Rachel right here. We'll pull that up. And just a quick review on our selection tools. We won't do this too much because we did it in our other ones. Alt scroll in with your mouse to zoom. And then we have our um, quick selection tool up. And I'm just going to select her here, select around her, uh, get as much of it her as I can. Select most of her black. And get into the white. There we go. That looks good. Now we just have to take out and add a little bit of her hair. So we're going to add our polygon lasso tool. To subtract from our selection, I hold Alt and I start clicking. You can let go of the Alt button after that. I want to deselect all of her fuzzies. And I'll just deselect some of this stuff down here. There we go. I want to add her hair in over here. Obviously I'm doing this pretty fast. You can take a little bit more of your time with it. With the hair you kind of want to get rid of some of the bumps and fuzzies and whatnot. Alright. Um, so from here you do refine edge. Make sure that it looks good. You can play around with the controls over here to see how it changes your selection. Um, I don't really like that blue in her hair right there, so I'm just going to uh, take that out. There we go. Excellent. Okay, so I'm just going to push OK. From here, I'm going to do Control Copy, and then I'm going to go over to the template, and I'm going to do Control V. So it's important so that you have your own template um, or your own page that once you're out of the template and you started changing it, you're going to save it as. You don't want to save just regular save because that will save the template. You want to save as your own Photoshop document. So I'm in 2011 yearbook and I would save it as Rachel. Uh, Rachel yearbook right there. So I'm going to save, press OK, and now I have the Start to Rachel. Now remember, you can change the background. You can uh, just paint it, which is under this gradient tool if you can't find it. If you know her favorite color is, well, let's say green. You just paint it green, or you have the option of actually using the gradient tool. It will automatically go from green to white, which are the colors you have selected here. But you can change that. You just click on these to... Uh, choose whichever color you'd like. You can add um, add 
different gradients in there as well. Uh, let's see. There we go. I like it like that. And I have my little X and I just scroll across, have my nice little gradient. There are different options for the gradient up here too. It changes how it looks. Um, so we can start with that. And then I can do my text layer and nice big text. Rachel. Now right now her name is uh, underneath her current photo layer, so I can just scroll that to the top and it will be up in front of her. I think that's how she spells her name. I can move it however I want. I could get creative with it. I could do control T, make it much bigger. Um, I can go to my blending options and I can do drop shadow. I can do ooh, outer glow and I can make it glow. Uh, let's make it glow. Make it glow a nice yellow. All right, and then you can make it glow as big as you want, small as you want, things like that. You can also do gradient overlays to your text. It will automatically go black to white. Um, let's see. You can even do 3D text if you'd like. So to do 3D text, we're going to cancel this. To do 3D text, what you do is you, from your layer right here, you're going to right click and you're going to go rasterize type. That means it will no longer be a text layer. It will just be a uh, pixelated layer. So we have this, and instead of doing control J, which makes a copy directly on top of it right here, I'm going to undo that. Now to make copies, I'm going to hold alt and I'm going to push the left scroll key. So I'm going to do that, and this makes a copy slightly to the nudge to the left. So I'm going to make a bunch of copies here, say 16 copies. Then I'm going to grab from 16, hold shift to the first copy, and then I'm going to do merge layers right here. So that's just going to scrunch them all together. And then I also have my original layer here, which I'm going to put to the top. Now for this copied layer, now I'm going to do my blending options. I'll do that gradient overlay, which is nice. And then I'll press OK. And then for this top layer, I'll do my blending options. But this time I'll do color overlay because it looks a little silly and green. Um, as you can see, I can change it to whatever color I want. I think it will look good in white. And I'm going to do bevel and emboss. And I'm going to hit contour. And under the contour, or the shading part here, I'm going to click this little box here, and I'm going to scroll through to what I want. I'll make it nice and pretty up there. And, yeah, so then we have a nice 3D layer right there, and you can play with these as much as you want. Um, so now we have Rachel. Remember, you have to leave room for the questions and answers, so again, you just use your text layer. In your text layer, you can change the size, the color, over here, you can change what font you want. Um, make sure it's big enough for people to see, so probably about 12. And you can, you know, type question. Obviously, this font is kind of hard to read, so you want something that's a little bit more solid than that. Um, so people can actually see what she said. And it looks like I have my cap box on, so it reversed it. So, question. And looks like we can go even bigger with it. So anyways, you can change it up from there. You can always move it or add to it how you'd like. These are your layers over here. Kind of keep track of them. Don't forget to save frequently. So file save like that. So that's how we um, do our yearbook layers. Now for our calendar layers, they're a little bit more fun. I have the boulders again. Uh, the borders, we still have our guides on. The guides will move unless they're locked. So if you don't want them to move while you're kind of doing stuff, you can just go up here to Window, and then you go to, um, I'm sorry, you go to View, and you can go to Lock Guides, and that will just keep those guides in place. If you don't like to see the guides, you just do Control H, and it will hide the guides, but they'll still be there. So. For some of the calendar layers, 
um, it's essentially the same thing, but we can add different effects. So we have our fireball effect, which you can also find in the, yearbook, um, the yearbook file. And I have a little um, PSD called fireballs. You just click on that, and it either has, these are the two people shooting fireballs or the one person fireball. You just grab them with shift, and you can drag them over to your current layer. Um, but since we already have them on our Kyle PSD, we'll just leave it there. So Kyle has this nice fireball. As you can see, he also has a little tint across him. And that's this layer right here. That's this uh, black and white and add tint. So as you can see, he's kind of normal looking without it. But I figure since he was holding fire, he can have a little bit of tint across him. Um, now to do this effect right here, where he's sliding and blurring, um, those are these layers right here. Now what you do with this is you make a copy of your regular layer. So this is his layer. All of these have already been cut out. And you do the control J, right, which makes that extra layer. The layer that's on bottom is the one you're going to blur. So you have to decide which direction you want to blur. And you just pull them out however far uh, you want. I don't want them going this way because it kind of looked like he was moving this way. So I'm going to put them there. And then you go up to filter and you go to blur and you scroll down here to motion blur. So I'm going to click motion blur and as you can see it already blurred him and you can change the distance however you want. See how blurry or how whatnot you want it. You can press OK. You can move it and that's how you get that little motion blur effect. I used the same motion blur effect here. I just found a picture of sand. I cut it out a little bit and then I blurred it around him. So um, now I want to really quickly show you how you make the borders uh, for these guys. So what you're going to do to make the borders is you can start out with the background image, right, which is something that I got from the public images again. This is just a nice little public image. Or you can use your own photos like, let's see. Um, you can use your own photos for backgrounds, which I did with some of them as well. But if you just have um, your background, which is, let's say, normally going to be about this size, you can always just have a regular uh, black background and cut it that size for your border, or you can make your own border. Now to do that, you go down to this shapes image right here, and whatever color is selected, that's what color your shape is going to be. So I'm going to start it out with black, and I'm going to start from this end, go all the way over, and it's going to fill in whatever shape I have there. From there, I am going to right click, I'm going to go rasterize layer. And now from here, on my guides, I'm going to make sure that it's the right size real quick. From here on my guides, I'm going to take my crop tool, which is right here. All right, my, uh, I'm sorry, I ended up just making another shape. I don't want to do that. So I delete this. So once I have my full black shape selected, I'm going to take my crop tool or my selection tool here, and I'm going to grab along the guides, and I'm just going to do Control X. That leaves me with this nice border shape right here. So now I can do whatever I want with this border shape. I can do a bevel and emboss. Make it nice and deep. Um, on my bevel, I can uh, can change the colors and things like that. I can do a nice color overlay if I want it like that. Um, one of the things I did for the Christmas part of the calendar is I just did a Christmas or a gradient overlay, and you can change it however you want. So you could do something like this, and you can change the colors. You can change the angle um, of how the gradient is going to look, things like that. If you want, say, an American flag behind it, like I have right here um, on the 4th of July, all you have to do is go again to your public images. Let's go here, and I'm going to look for American flag. And I like this nice detail of the American flag, so I'm going to get that. 
and I'm going to download it. And then I download the photo. And I have it here, so I'm just going to select it. You can do Control A to select all, copy, and then we go back to our uh, PSD here. And I'm just going to do Control V, Control T, and I'm going to make it the full size of my image here. Now, one thing you can do is because I have this shape here, I'm going to do Control and I'm going to click on the little icon there, and it's actually going to select whatever um, whatever I have in that layer but I'm gonna keep my um, flag layer selected so it basically selects whatever I've controlled select on but it still has my flag layer so then I do control copy control V and then I end up with a little flag border so um, that's basically how you do all of the uh, yearbook and calendar Photoshop so I hope you learned some good things, and I will see you next time. Thanks. Bye.